In a recent video, I analyzed Shane Van Boning's controversial foul shot in the recent UK Open. I thought the video would convince everybody that the ref made the wrong call. But based on hundreds of comments on YouTube and Facebook, there are many people who still don't agree. I decided I would try one more time with this follow-up video that addresses all questions raised. First, let's look at pertinent WPA rules, regulations, and guidelines. In my previous video, I already discussed specific rules dealing with the shot itself. There are also pertinent standard practices for calling fouls. These things are not explicitly stated in the WPA rules and regulations, but referees are trained to follow these guidelines, and this is how the rules are applied in practice by qualified and experienced referees. A shot is legal unless there is clear visual evidence of a foul. The evidence can be direct or indirect based on motion of balls. If video review is used to resolve an uncertain or questioned call, the initial call has no impact on the final ruling. If evidence for a foul is found, the shot is a foul. If evidence for a good hit is found, the shot is called good. And if it is too close to call, the benefit of the doubt goes to the shooter and the shot is still called good. The most pertinent guidance I could find in the WPA documentation related to the benefit of the doubt going to the shooter is Regulation 27. This might not apply directly to the shot in question, but I think the intent is relevant. If you make the following minor changes to the regulation, it more directly applies. Maybe the WPA should consider being more inclusive of related situations like this. Regardless, the precedent set by Regulation 27 is clear. When you can't tell what was hit first, the benefit of the doubt goes to the shooter. This is close to the view the ref had of the shot when watching it live. Try to play the role of the ref here and tell me if you think this shot is a foul or not. What about this one? What about this one? And what about this one? What did you answer for each of the four shots? Did you notice that the cue ball in three took pretty much identical paths with each shot? Could you tell if the cue ball hit the three first or the cushion first in each case? Here they are again in super slow motion. The first shot was a ball first hit with the cue ball hitting the cushion after the ball, so it is clearly not a foul. The second shot was similar, but did you notice the cue ball hit the three a second time during the live video? Of course not, because it was happening too fast to see. Again, the second shot is also clearly not a foul. The third shot was a cushion first hit, but it is still legal because the cue ball hit the cushion again after hitting the three. Could you see this action in the original live video? Of course not, because it happened too fast to see. With the four shot, the cue ball appears to hit the three and cushion at very close to the same time, but can you be sure? Of course not, it is happening too fast to see, even in super slow motion. Upon careful review, it seems like the three was hit first, in which case the shot is not a foul. But again, it is too close to call, even with super slow motion video, which is usually not available to refs during video review. Regardless, it is clear there is no direct evidence of a foul with any of the four shots since the action of the balls is much too fast to see with the naked eye or standard video. Sometimes evidence of a foul can be indirect by watching the motion of the balls. A good example of this is detecting a double hit when there is a small gap between the cue ball and object ball. Here's an excerpt from my Everything You Need to Know About Fouls video that explains how this is done. Here's what a double hit foul looks like in slow motion. You can clearly see how the second hit forces the cue ball forward. The way you detect a double hit foul with an angled shot like this is by watching if the cue ball heads in the expected tangent line direction off the object ball immediately after the hit like these shots. If the cue ball goes forward of the tangent line immediately, the shot is a foul, like these examples. You cannot necessarily see or hear the double hit directly, but the double hit foul is obvious based on the motion of the cue ball. Again, with a small gap double hit, you can rarely see the double hit directly, 
but there is usually clear indirect evidence that the double hit occurred. Now back to Shane's shot. First, the ref obviously didn't have the benefit of seeing all the super slow motion video footage with full explanations in the previous section. And he certainly could not have thought through all of this on his own while attempting to judge the shot live. However, during video review, he had plenty of time to think about what indirect evidence might be available to help him make the correct call. It was obvious that it was impossible to tell if the cue ball hit the three or cushion first. That's why video review is so important for a shot like this. It gives you time to think about ball motions possible and consistent with a good hit or a foul. Judging from the shallow angle at which the cue ball was approaching the rail, it is clear the cue ball must hit the cushion after hitting the three. Either with a ball first hit where the cut on the three is very thin, or with a cushion first hit where the cue ball is still cutting the three after the shallow rebound off the cushion. Again, the cue ball must hit the cushion after the three, either with a ball first or a cushion first hit. In either case, the shot is not a foul. Now, as I pointed out in my previous video, it is possible there would be simultaneous contact between the cue ball, three, and cushion, but as we saw in the previous section, this is almost impossible to tell, even with super slow motion video, so the benefit of the doubt must go to the shooter. Again, the shot should not have been called a foul. Even though the ref wasn't able to do a thorough frame-by-frame -frame analysis of the video available to him, it can be useful to do so even though the frame rate was not very fast. If you look closely, the three appears to move first, with the cue ball making a slight move toward the cushion. Here it is a few more times, zoomed up a little. Does it look like the cue ball hit the three first and then move a little toward the cushion? That's what it looks like to me. If the three did move first, this would be clear, direct evidence the shot was good. Here it is, frame by frame. The three first moves in this frame, with the cue ball heading toward the cushion. Here, it is likely the cue ball hits the three again. FYI, you can view a YouTube video frame by frame like this on your own. On a computer, just hit the pause button or spacebar, and then use the comma and period keys to step back and forth through the frames. Here are the key frames again. Doesn't it look like the three is hit first? The cue ball also probably hits the three again after hitting the cushion, but the video frame rate isn't fast enough to show this. This super slow motion clip clearly shows an example of the three being hit again with a thin initial hit. But again, the frame rate of the original video was not fast enough to capture that action. If you are still a doubter after my previous video, I hope you are now convinced. The shooter is innocent until proven guilty, either with direct visual evidence or with indirect evidence based on how the balls react and move. No evidence of a foul is available with Shane's shot. A referee's job can be difficult at times, and a ref's final ruling must be accepted during play. But when bad calls are made, we should point them out and learn from them. That's the only way to prevent similar mistakes from being made in the future. Hopefully, videos like these will help. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.